Hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, great. All right, well, thanks for coming. My name's Dan, and this is my lightning talk, building an AI assistant for BI, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So quick introduction, I lead the engineering team at Hashboard. If you're not familiar with us, we are a business intelligence platform aimed at self-service analytics. I'll tell you a bit more about Hashboard in a bit, uh, but I've been working in the business intelligence space for my whole career. Started off at Google, working on Google Analytics and advertising analytics there. Then I was at a health tech company called Flatiron Health. And now I've been on Hashboard for a few years, thinking about BI basically 24 seven. I, you're probably familiar with business intelligence if you chose to come to this talk. And this is always the dream, right? Especially for self-service. We are gonna put all of our data into Databricks and then all of our stakeholders are going to interact directly with that data and monitor their business or answer questions, get insights. That's, that's the dream. And the reality in my experience, and I'm sure in all of your experience, is usually very different. The engineers and product managers maybe go back and forth all day about the features you have to collect. Your data scientists are finding quality issues and having to talk back to the engineers to fix them. Your analysts are fielding requests from many different stakeholders, building dashboards, reports, and charts. Maybe your customers need access to their data, but they can't get to it, so they talk to support, who then has to go back to your analyst team. Bottom line is that there's a lot more friction in getting BI to our end users than we would like, right? And lately, I've been thinking about this almost like a language problem. All of these different users are, are interacting with the data in their own language, sometimes literally, if the engineers are writing SQL and the data scientists are writing R or Python. But also, kind of figuratively, the operations team maybe talks in Excel and your executives talk in PowerPoint decks, right? And this frame of reference has gotten very interesting to me lately because of AI, right? Large language models are now here. And it turns out they're very good at translating between languages. So I think all of our dream, maybe what inspired you to come to this talk, is that we can put AI in between those stakeholders and the data and make this all just work, right? Get rid of all of the friction. So we're gonna use AI to improve BI. But sometimes we think about it even a step further. Maybe you don't have to ask these questions at all anymore. Maybe you can pipe your data into your all-knowing, omnipotent AI in the center and it'll give you the answers to your questions before you even have to ask, right? Maybe we're not just improving BI, maybe we're gonna replace BI with AI. It's maybe a bit, a step too far for, for me, but it's, it's kind of the ultimate goal. And so at Hashboard, we spent all day thinking about how to empower these stakeholders. So like most data companies out there, we decided to build a feature. We wanted to build an AI feature to help translate natural language from end users into data. And this, this talk is the story of building that feature. And, and the spoiler alert is that this is not really a technical talk. So there's a ton of technical, interesting things that go into building these features, but we discovered that most of the challenges, at least at this stage, are a lot more about the user experience and the product design than the implementation itself. So before I get into that, uh, I just wanna give you a little bit of context on what Hashboard is if you haven't used it. So like I mentioned, we are a governed self-service business intelligence tool. So that means that it's used by data teams to model their data in one place and allow all of their stakeholders to use it in a safe and governed way. So we have a semantic data layer, it's kind of blocked on the, on the tech caption there, but we have semantic data modeling inside of the tool where you teach Hashboard where your data lives, how it relates to your business concepts. There are automatic exploratory visualizations that you give to your users so they can understand the shape of your data really quickly, and you hopefully get answers that asking the data team. There's centralized metrics tracking, more for your executive type use cases, so you can see all of your metrics in one place in a consistent way, try to understand what's driving what. We have funnel and product analytics baked into the tool, so directly on top of Databricks, you can understand user journeys, join it to your more general purpose business intelligence use cases. Everything can be represented as code, which means you can integrate with CI CD, do version control, do deployment environments, everything that your engineers love to do. And finally, there is a Python SDK that you can use to extract out your business logic so it's not locked in to your BI tool. This is how it works architecturally. So we're issuing SQL queries directly to your Databricks data warehouse. Uh, and after your data team has set up the models, it allows your end users to kind of issue off their own queries without writing their own SQL. 
So all this being said, we are very excited about AI at Hashboard because we think that there's a lot of components here that are useful for an LLM. We have a semantic layer already, which means we can teach the LLM about your business. All of your resources can be represented as code, and it turns out LLMs are quite good at writing code. And because we're issuing queries directly to your infrastructure, there's no pre-aggregation we have to do. So we can leave a lot up to the AI to decide what queries to write. So great. We kicked off this project. Our initial idea, the user's going to ask a question. It's going to be magic. They're going to get a chart. I'm sure many of you have imagined or even tried out features like this already. Here was the workflow. The user was going to choose a data model to explore. They're going to type in what they want, like weekly sales by payment method. It's going to return back some JSON. So we kind of invented this new language that the LLM was going to speak, uh, imagining like you're interacting with the chart. So it's going to say, all right, change the y-axis, add a breakout, change the granularity. And then, oops, those changes were going to be applied directly to your chart. And the architecture we tried to keep as simple as we possibly could and still have it work. So we took our existing backend service. We allowed it to take in the context of the user and the prompt. We would generate a prompt for the LLM, pass it through, return back the JSON to the front end. And the prompt structure, again, not too complicated, probably similar to a lot of other prompts you've seen before. We're going to tell the LLM what it's going to do, some constraints, give it a few examples, no pre-training yet, show the user's context, and finally, what the user's looking for. And jump to like a week later, and we had a demo that was Pretty cool. I was pretty shocked, actually, at how easy it is to stand up at least a prototype with these kinds of features. So here's what it looked like. This is the Hashboard Data Explorer. We added a new tab called the AI Assistant. And you click it, and it shows you a few examples. And then you have this text box. Please describe what you want to explore. And this is our favorite demo data set. It is the, all of the calls that New York City agencies get when people are complaining. It's a very fun data set to explore around in. And this feature worked. You can type in, I want to see call volume by week. And it changed the chart type. It added a filter, and it looked pretty good. You can iterate. You can say, hey, take this same chart, break it out by agency, maybe add some colors. Uh, and it would kind of just work and do what you want it to do. So we were very excited about this. We plugged it into all of our pivoting features, all of our uh, exploration uh, filtering features. What really blew my mind was that I could ask it a question like, did noise complaints go up or down when COVID started? And this is the kind of question that it is hard to answer in, an, in, a, in a vacuum, but just these out-of-the-box foundation LLMs would choose to filter to March of 2020 and then show you how noise complaints changed after that. This really blew my mind because it meant that the models were able to take into account context from outside of your question. So in this case, it was COVID, but you could imagine feeding your business context to a model, or maybe your forecasted revenue, or your customer information, or your marketing campaigns, and have an LLM like this use that context to answer the questions in a really cool way. So this was good enough for us. We put another week or two of polish into it, and we launched it. Uh, we really love launching early at Hashboard, getting feedback from customers. So we turned it on, we sat back, and we waited for all the praise to start rolling in. So what actually happened? What we expected to happen was we were going to spend the next month really in the details optimizing what our model was doing. We could choose a different foundation model. We could fine tune it and pre-train it. We can make the prompt better. We can add a rag. We can add a chain of thought. We can make the inference faster. A lot of really interesting technical problems here. But we were feeding all of these questions to our logging system and auditing them, trying to rank how good they were doing. And it turned out that most of the time, the problem with the feature was not with the model. It was upstream. It was how we designed the UI and what users actually wanted to do with a feature like this. So we went through all of these uh, kind of failed requests. We tried to bucket them. And it came out about three failure modes that were pretty common across the board across all of our customers. And I bet you're going to see these failure modes in other places too. Number one, mistaken identity. If you give a user a text box and you say, this is an AI, tell us what you want. A lot of them are going to assume it's a chatbot. Everybody knows ChatGPT. They're going to expect to put natural language in and get natural language out. And so we were getting questions like, how do I configure this data to refresh once per hour? 
It's a very reasonable question. You can do it on Hashboard. It has nothing to do with a chart configuration. And so you would get nothing back, or you get an error, and the user doesn't know what to do next, so it was pretty frustrating. Failure mode number two, impossible tasks. So maybe you asked something about the chart, but you really wanted the bars to be colored with polka dots. You can't do that in Hashboard. The user doesn't know that. The model doesn't really know that. And so again, you don't get what you want, and it's very hard to know what to do next. Number three, and probably the hardest challenge for us to really solve, was about the data. So if your user is, and if you remember our workflow was you pick a data set, and then you ask a question. If you're looking at a marketing data model, and you ask, who was my most active customer yesterday? No matter how smart your LLM is, no matter how powerful it is, it can't answer that question with that data. And so we were asking our users to do something first that was actually sometimes harder than the task of building a chart that looks good. And if your data team has not modeled the data upstream of them, they might be out of luck. So we took a step back, and we asked ourselves, what was the assumption we were making in this feature that kind of made it go off track? And it came down to this. We were treating AI like this one big agent that would do everything for you, would take in a question, and then would answer it for you. But when we thought about how do people solve this problem, how do organizations solve this problem, it's not just one thing, right? If you think back to that first diagram, there's so many skills and stakeholders and people that you need to be involved to do BI well. You have to make sure your data is correct and complete. You have to make your data models represent your business. You have to design tables and dashboards that are ergonomic and easy to use. You have to ask, you have to ask good questions. You have to find the right data. And most importantly, if you look at your data, you have to make good conclusions about that data. And each one of these tasks in a real organization, it might be a person, it might be a whole team who has trained their whole careers to do this well. And this was the, the kind of core insight that I think we were missing at the start of the feature is that there's a lot of agents involved in BI, and you can't just build one AI that can do everything. And so our approach going forward is to think about AI as an assistant that's going to be paired with a role or an agent or a task to help that person do that task faster and better. And this has been a much more successful philosophy for building features, at least for us inside of Dashboard. So generalizing this to some principles that we're following ourselves, first one is one AI agent for a real world role, right? And maybe your agents can talk to each other, but you should always start with who are the people that are using this feature and what is their role and what are their skills? And what are the skills that we want to help them accelerate with an AI model? Make your constraints super, super obvious. This was another mistake we made. If you don't know what the AI can do, people will assume it's a chatbot, and they probably won't be happy with it. And finally, especially for data, results need to be super precise and super reproducible. The more that your AI is doing, the higher the bar is to explain why it did what it did. Because we would see people ask two similar questions, get two very different answers, and then never use the feature again. Because especially in data, if you lose trust in what the system is telling you, you're just not going to use it. So trust is important, and reproducibility is a big part of trust. So for us, we, we, we went back to the drawing board. We don't like shipping features and marketing them if they're not actually useful. So uh, we took a step up in the hierarchy, and we built a new feature that we called Data Search. So uh, it lives at, in the top level of Hashboard. You don't have to choose your data first. And it's still natural language. You can still ask it kind of high-level questions that an end user might be wondering. But the input and output is much more clear. You're typing in natural language, and you're building these filter chips. And those chips are guiding you to the right data. So we're focusing on not just answering your question, but we're helping you find the data that your data team has set up to answer the question you're going to have. And then once it looks good, you can click Explore from here. And now you've moved out of the finding your data mode and you're moving into your insight mode. Maybe you want to find out what the best pizza topping is or something like that. And we're not done. There's a lot more we'd like to do with AI and Hashboard, but now we're taking a much more practical approach to it. So we're looking at our roadmap that we're planning to ship in the next three to four months and starting to highlight what are the features that would benefit from having an AI assistant paired in there. If you had a magical agent that you can ask for help, what were those features that would be most useful for you? So, 
bootstrapping your model, you're going from your physical tables to what your BI tool is going to expose. Probably useful for an LLM. Data quality alerts. They're really good at looking at large lists of values and picking out the weird ones. Right? We're going to use LLMs for that. Data annotations, looking at a single chart and asking what happened here, why did this go up or down, and helping the user write that description. So we're moving away from AI does everything to AI helps you with very specific subtasks. So yeah, that's it. Uh, short talk, uh, but if you're interested in chatting with us, I would love to talk more. If you're interested in trying on Hashboard, you can just sign up for a free trial on the website. My colleague David is around somewhere, I think maybe with swag. Uh, but yeah, if there are any questions if you have any.